Okay, uh, got a lot to talk about with uh, the Weber carburetor to try to help you guys out. So uh, at first, um, I'm going to show you a short video. It's, it, I'm going to try to be short. It's a short video on how to tune it, how to set the idle, how to do the mixture, a little bit of the choke, um, and then I'm going to proceed with a bunch of other videos of things I've done to my trucks and in depth in each aspect of the carburetor and taking it apart, setting the float, a um, bunch of other stuff. Incredibly long videos, a lot of me jibber jabbering, but it's kind of helpful. I mean, when I was messing around, I wish there was somebody jibber jabbering a lot about these and taking them apart. They kind of knew what they were doing, so here's my gift to you all guys. Okay, put my glasses on. What we're going to be doing is demonstrating on this clone Weber that I'm not running. Uh, of course, your Weber will be on your truck or vehicle. Um, mainly my focus here is Mazda pickup trucks, 86 through 93. Um, but, so you got one on your truck. Um, I'm not sure exactly... First things first, let's make sure that um, you've addressed all your vacuum leaks. Um, let's, hopefully your timing is set properly. Um, it's about to rain here, so my tin roof's about to make a lot of racket. I'll try to be quicker. Okay, so um, on your idle mixture, no, not, not mixture, but your, uh, let me get this open, your idle, what they say do, let's see if we can get this in camera here, you want to, let me just open that up, it's, it's a cold choke, there we go, so what you're going to want to do is you run the idle, so this is your, um, your throttle and that's your idle adjustment screw right there get it in focus that's your idle adjustment screw and all you want to do to get your idle is uh, of course I can't I'm trying to do all this let's see if we can zoom in okay so you want it to just touch the linkage and then you want to start your counting and so what you want to do count your turns is you want to like Let's see, that's a half a turn, that's one turn, and then this would be one and a half right there. Um, they say do not go over one and a half or you'll open your, your um, throttle plates on the bottom too much. And you'll have a, a really rich condition. So I had mine marked um, at just, it's got that black on it, just before one and a half. And for me, I did run this carb at one point, um, at one time, and um, I think that was about, you know, 850 or so. So if you just do almost one and a half turns in, you should be able to have a, a decent idle to get started doing the rest of your tuning. Um, a lot of this stuff, you know, you'll just have to, like, get your tuning set a little bit, get your mixture set a little bit. Run back to your tune, uh, your idle, your idle. Run back to your mixture to get it all dialed in. Uh, real quick, we will go over the the mixture. So to set your mixture and find out where you are on that, you just want to screw it in gently until it stops. But you don't want to see it stopped right there. And I'm not turning it hard because that could damage the seat so right now if this was on your vehicle it wouldn't run what you want to do back it out two turns so that's a half a turn that's one turn then that's one and a half then two crank your truck up it should run then what you want to do See if the idle increases as you continue to turn it outward. So now it's like two and three quarter. Mm, wait, I was at two. That's 
No, that's not two and three quarter. Wait, yeah, that's almost two and a half. Now that would be two and a half. You want to see how it runs. If it increases, just make a note of it. Go a little further. You don't hear any hear it idle up anymore. Then back it, back it down. Then back it down to where it runs rough. So here I am at two. What if I went to like one and three quarter or one and a half? If I go below one and a half, she's about she's really gonna about die. So I'm gonna bring it back up. Maybe maybe one and a, one and three quarter is a good spot. Maybe two is the sweet spot. You want to find the spot where it runs the smoothest, and to get it to run a little lean, you want to be on the side where it starts to run a little rough, but not rough. Just come out of that roughness a little bit. That's where you're gonna. And I'm telling you, just a little bit means you can move it. Look at it. That right there could be two miles per gallon. I'm not kidding. It's very sensitive. So you just want to find that sweet spot, run it for a couple of days, you know, check your mileage. You might can tweak on it. For me, in the winter, I run about two full turns because in the winter you want it to be richened up a little bit. And then the um, summer, I can get away with one and three quarter one and a half turn sometimes I can't remember I wrote it down somewhere um, but that's that <clears throat> now real quick on the um, trying to be quick on setting your choke let's move this camera a little on setting the choke what I recommend because it's all about this tension um, the easiest thing I have found is to get the vehicle to run, warm it up, it's good and warm, and when it's good and warm, your choke plates should be open like this. So then, what you want to do, and if it's cold outside, you're going to have to run out under the hood, pop it, you know, loosen this, and do it all real quickly if you use this method that I'm about to show you. I suggest you take a pencil and mark where you currently are. So you can come back to wherever you currently are in case you get this all fouled up. But let's say you've been running this truck's warmed up, and it's and it's um I'm gonna relax this choke a little bit, and it's right here. Truck's running, it's warmed up. What I do is loosen the ring, and I adjust my choke to where it starts to want to to do, to, to to turn into the close. You'll know what I'm talking about on a, on a warm choke. The choke has to have a 12 volt power source and once it's warmed up you'll see what I'm talking about but you'll want to turn it right where at the at the flip that's where you want it and you want to tighten it down. That's not accurate in this video because this choke is cold so I'm going to put it back where I had it. And it's not really cold in here. It's um, 74 actually but this choke still does not have power applied to it, so it's, um, in fact, in fact, that's where it wants to see, I believe, yeah, it's, it's so warm in here right now, I mean, it's choking a little, but as soon as you crank it, this dude would be just ready to go, just about, it's very, very easy to press in right now, choke doesn't have much tension on it. All right, so that's that, quick and dirty on that. Now stay tuned for the rest of this hour-long video or whatnot for um, all the rest of the information. Oh, it's worth noting here, it says here on the mixture, uh, the mixture screw is out, if it's out more than two turns, then the idle jet is too lean. It means it's too small. It means you're having to turn it out more to get more fuel in there. So the mix, if it's out, one and a half turns or less and the idle jet is too big so you know everybody could benefit from having a jet I don't have it here with me but a jet kit they're not very expensive from um, I got it put up over there a jet kit is nice to have so that you can mess with the jets but generally um, it's gonna come with a 60 on the primary and a 55 on the secondary and it'll all be fine. You won't. You really won't ever have to change anything if you're just running straight 87 or um, non-ethanol fuels.
This video is going to be all about some Weber carburetors. Um, I asked a group on Facebook, I polled them and said, hey, y'all want me to do a video on how to tune them? Because uh, a lot of people are always asking how to tune them. How cool would it be if there was just a video, point everybody to, covered the basics? Am I a Weber aficionado, pro, no, but gotten pretty good with carburetors over the many years and these are pretty easy to work on so thought I'd pass on what I've learned um, from trial and error experience and talking with the uh, support at Redline so get the coffee ready oh yeah uh, I want to get these videos out of the way because it's gonna rain all weekend I think and uh, my metal roof it would be too loud in here to do this stuff so also, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm sorry if my dog starts barking. Uh, he's he's on, he's on mouse patrol, so uh, he may cut out, bark, do who knows what. So I'm sorry if that's gonna interrupt anything. Um, real quick though, let's also talk about why do I do this. Some people are like, man, you, why you do this? Um, it's not for any monetary gain. It's on YouTube. YouTube is ridiculous now to try to monetize your videos. Uh, so I'm not even trying to do that. What I'm trying to do is uh, help people for I mean simple fact is just help people if I know something and it's easy for me to throw a cell phone on a tripod and just start doing it and showing you I'm gonna do it um, if I can throw it under the truck when I'm replacing a part and I know it'll help my friends that have the same trucks I'm gonna do it you no know, you, you can say <laughs> I mean it'd be cool to look back on these videos 30 years from now and see how much I've aged and how young I was that would be cool so it's cool to just document stuff um, you know, when you leave this earth, what are you going to leave behind? Uh, how will they know your name? Well, maybe I'll be remembered for the guy that had all these Mazda videos. I don't know. But that's really not my goal. My goal is simply just to to help. I mean, if I know something, there's one thing to chat about it and talk about it on the, on the internet, uh, on Facebook. But t t chatting and texting can go on forever. So sometimes a video... Just like a picture's worth a thousand words, video's worth a lot more. So let's just dive right in. Okay, how to tell if your Weber is genuine? Well, generally, they come with a white choke. Uh, it'll have Weber stamped in the uh, accelerator pump. If it's sold by Redline, it'll have Redline stamped in the bottom of it. Um, it'll have Weber, let's focus, Weber on the front, and at the bottom underneath it'll say by uh, LGN, or might even have, yeah, right over there, made in Spain, and of course there's some blue dots for some reason usually on top. <clears throat> okay, so um, you saw in my trucks I have genuine Weber carburetors, and I showed you how to you know, tell which what's what, uh, how to t determine if it's a genuine Weber carburetor. Well, these, I got two of these. Um, this one right here, uh, buddy Gordon Doss, let me have it. Thanks, Gordon. It's still good to have. Uh, even though this one here is a brand new knockoff, it's still good to have, too. I mean, it'll get you down the road. Um, the, uh, the, the thing about Webers and clones, uh, well, first off, let's just talk about how to how to find a clone. Black choke generally is a, a telltale sign, but that's just your first indication. Uh, if you see this little sticker on top, uh, it's fake. I mean, fake to an extent. I mean, it's a clone. Let's don't get too crazy with the word fake. It's a clone. It's just made of poorer quality. Uh, it doesn't have Weber stamped all over it like it should. It doesn't have Made in Spain or anything on it. Um, it's a good carburetor. It can be tuned and run pretty good what a lot of people have trouble with over time on the clones is the throttle throttle shaft throttle linkage shaft over time because this there's this this metal is made of like three different types of alloy or uh, one being aluminum there's some zinc and some other alloy and it's like a proprietary blend um, one that Weber and when they make it in Spain and stuff they they know it pretty well these the clones can't get it right and the metal doesn't last long 
And what can happen is the throttle shaft can wear oblong and create vacuum leaks. That's the first thing that can go. Uh, there's also just poor quality in um, milling and cutting and and um, casting some of this stuff. A lot of the jets, some guys have um, taken the jets <clears throat> that are, whew, can't see down there, deep within. You, know, you can take it apart. It's pretty easy to take apart. But they'll, they've will they checked the jets against, um, you got these little tiny rods that are precise and they'll tell you what the jetting is. Um, some of these say they're one thing and they'll be off. And uh, so it sometimes can be troublesome to get it to run lean or properly it'll, it'll run just always rich hard to tune in that regard but um if you know for a project truck you're trying to get up and going and you're going to put a, a good one on later for me i i could use this but i wouldn't recommend you just buying a junk one and then upgrading to a good one later go good from the start because these are like this was on ebay or something for like two 220 or something or 240 but a genuine Weber is only 40 bucks more if you just call or you got to visit Redline Weber Direct and get their phone number call them tell them I sent you <laughs> you might get a discount but no um, so <clears throat> uh, let me set up the tripod real quick and I'll show you what I mean by poor quality but I was just recently in here on my um, I'm gonna call it my B1, my my first Mazda. I call it B1, my project truck B2. But uh, on it, before I take that off, I'll give you a little little lesson and then and then show you something. So on B1, um, what I would notice on winter days. Now summer times, man, these things run great. The winter, you have to you know tune it, get it. You have to really have it just right. For it to work really well I mean it can work really well in the winter even the coldest of winters if you get this choke and choke pull off to work properly so on my b1 truck um, I struggled with setting the fast idle cam because what I what I found on the project truck uh, b2 is I could fire it up fast idle would hit like 2,000 rpm and it'll stay there then you tap it just a hair and it'll jump down to um, about 1,000 or 1,100 RPM. And sit there, warm on up, uh, you go get your coffee ready, come back outside, you know, later, five minutes or more, pat the gas, she's down there ready to idle, going about your day. If you were in a more hurry than that, you could still take off at 1,100 RPM. It wouldn't stall under load or anything. Well, my B1 truck, I never could get the fast idle to work properly. So, um, I compared the two, and I noticed that when, um, what happens is, this is what happens, you get in, you know, it's cold winter morning, you step on the gas, if your choke is set properly, with the correct spring tension, the butterfly shut, and it also squirts a little, the accelerator pump squirts a little gas in there, and it cranks up. Then, the engine produces a vacuum, and it with the choke pull off here it pulls the plates open a little bit how much is a little bit you you'll probably never find it on any Weber website or anything um, but what Ford always recommended is a seven millimeter gap whoa which this is not ooh, not seven millimeter but what they recommended was a small gap right there. Um, to talk a little more about that gap, um, what I'm using is like a, oh man, it's gone off there. It's a 1730 seconds or some kind of drill bit. It's, a, it's above the quarter. I don't have millim millimeter drill bits. Uh, you don't want to drop this. I don't think it'll go far but you uh that's the air gap that you want when the engine is running after a full choke what happens is on full choke you press accelerator boom you crank it up then the engine's vacuum works with the choke pull off pulls it open should only pull open that much because what happens is 
this actually goes back and hits that stop that we just adjusted and it rests right there and pushes it to about right there mine was going way too much getting too much air kind of defeating the choke purpose on this model on this truck I mean and so in my B1 truck it was getting it was like way up here a lot of air was getting in there wasn't working my um, fast idle properly the setting wasn't right so what I did on that truck for the longest was just back down the fast idle to about like 1500 I would crank it let it run there at 1500 for a, a while come back out later after your coffee's ready and stuff and you're ready to go pat the gas and hope it's ready to go um, hope it didn't die at a four-way stop down the road well I got really tired of that so I got to investigate and then I found out compared to the other truck this was way too far open so then I thought well it has something to do with that so it's just got to be this choke pull off and if it's set right then my fast idle should work like B2 truck so with all that said back to this before I take this last screw off show you about some poor quality <clears throat> granted it does look very used we don't know the history of it but I just have a feeling because I've done been in here and I've looked at it I've looked at two genuine Weber carbs and they're great of course this other um, carb I've already been in it it looks good but this one however um, it does not this one here hmm it um, you, that's as far in as you can screw that really should go it should bottom out it should go all the way back but it won't and that's because from the get-go this thing probably never ran right well as far as choking goes it's cross-threaded um, it's not started this is fine it's just in here it's not not it just was they just jammed it in there and put it together must have been like five o'clock on a Friday it's even crooked so anyway it could be fixed at least I know how I could retap it and fix it but I just want to show you poor quality um Oh, if you ever do that and you put this back together, don't forget your spring. That's for sure. Don't do that. You know, there's a little vacuum too. You know, in in another video I made, I talked about doing um Loctite on here. Okay, all I did, uh, I had to put the camera down, of course, pick it back up, but it's not screwed on. But I held it on. I tried the drill bit deal. Um, apparently, I got it right on this first time through. So I'm just going to um, take my screws and screw it in, screw it back together. If, it, if I find out that it's doing it again later on, what I may do is put a little Loctite. You know, I think I'll put some Loctite on it anyways. I think I'll just put a little bit. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to wait, see what happens. And if it needs it later, I'll figure out a way to make it not move. And, and I stuttered about it a little, not sure what to do. In my mind, I was thinking, well, the reason I don't want to do it is because there is vacuum in here. And I don't want any kind of chips or anything to break off one day, get sucked through the tiny hole. Hole, hole, comes in there here. Um, you know, it. Ew. there's a tiny, tiny hole right here. Whoa, excuse me. Boy, this is going to suck. Let me get this camera right. Can't tell. There's a tiny, tiny hole right there. All of that operates off vacuum, so I don't want to... That's why I was hesitant about that. I don't really want to have stuff in there that could cause me trouble later and make me scratch my head. Okay. When you get these, any kind of carb... Um, if the UPS guys or FedEx guys don't drop kick them, the float should be okay. But a lot of VW, these are used on VWs all the time. Um, a lot of VW guys swear by it. There's even an episode on Gas Monkey Garage where they built the, uh, maybe it was a 250 horsepower VW 
they the guy swore by it. He says when you get one of these in the box, you take this top off and you set the float because it's going to be wrong. Well, <clears throat> I can't say that I have not run into that. Um, I just adjust them in. I think I might have, but in the paperwork, if they don't hadn't corrected it already on the website on Redline Weber where you can look up the tuning guide. If they haven't um, done so already, their 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 guide is wrong. Um, in the email, uh, I have to look it up on my phone, but I, it's different. I know it sounds confusing because I'm all over the place, but um, <clears throat> when I was talking to Redline Weber in the tuning process, um, he said online their document's wrong. They used to be like 45 millimeter up to like 47 or something, but they're doing something different now. And I forget it right now, and I'm using my phone to record, and it's in my notes on there, but i tell you what I'll do. If you check the description under the YouTube video, I'll have that information there. Might even make it the first comment. But, whoa. Just to show you how easy it is to take this top off, there's six screws. Oh, I almost forgot something. <clears throat> We're going to have to take this tiny circlip apart, and it could go flying. Let's just do that right now. What I do is snap it off. That's it. Put it to the side. Then this will come off. And, well, it'll work better if I take the screws out. ready to lift off yeah now I'm gonna um, take this choke lever off yep and okay so hmm so dump all my screws out it comes with some um, float made of well let me get these screws out I forget what it's made of pull these screws out okay all right so there's that well anyways <clears throat> when you're setting these floats let me go get my little tool. It's not so much a tool, but this did come with a, <clears throat> the original, like I had a kit to do a stock Mazda carb <clears throat> years ago. I've rebuilt the stock Mazda carb, stock Mazda Mikuni carb a couple of times. Uh, the first time was the most treacherous of times. The thing had like over a hundred pieces. Um, this came with it, but so this side's in millimeter, and um, looks like we got like 15, 16, about a 17 millimeter, and then a 22 or so. That's I believe I remember. That's the new settings. Um, so maybe it is um, okay this is probably going to get more in depth than i thought okay so when doing um a float adjustment and my camera's pointed at an angle and i'm trying to do this all you want to do is like have it to where it rests 
and I believe the documentation said mm, oh yeah oh yeah the documentation said this has to be on of course that yeah I think that's right it's kind of hard to do this with the camera in front of me okay so boy this is going to be hard to show you guys what you want to do that top line that I wrote, scribbled on it all right, so this is open or down. Top of the float is, of course, the top of the float. This one, of course, this one's a like, looks like it's too much. Let's see if I can show you. Oh, man. It's about like, eh, it's kind of on the pencil line. It's probably 21, 23, which I think is okay. Then when it's closed, hmm, I'm thinking, uh, I'll have to review my notes. This one could be way off, but I think my notes say that when it's closed, it's supposed to rest on that line. It's not much. And then, of course, when you... To adjust it you just push out this pin take the pin out you got to be very careful with the needle and seat and you have to just adjust this tab very so slightly to get those measurements this is this is the hardest part of the carburetor of any carburetor that's the hardest part let me um, pause the video I think I got that documentation over to the side here Through magic of television I am back okay paperwork this is what I was talking about you see that big X this is on their website now or something they uh, put an X on it because it's wrong they used to have 40 and 50 millimeter and that's that's just wrong even even the big guys make mistakes so they told me uh, they wanted the, the drop float level 17.5 millimeter top of float to carb top gasket at point farthest from the hinge pin there's more information about this on their website talks about there should only be two millimeter of needle travel two millimeter very tiny so very little people that uh, complain oh I don't want got gas mileage and all this kind of stuff oh I need a I need a pressure regulator well you gotta check this float that's why I have on here whoops it's right up above the 15. Let's see if I can get that to focus. 16, 17 and a half or so. So this one here is not right. This one would need adjustment to where <clears throat> this was good, but then it would close about right there or so. So anyways, enough of that. Enough of that talk. Just figured while I was in there, I would discuss the float okay generally in a Weber you would not need to mess with any of these air correctors uh, oh and I forget the what those guys are called but uh, these are all like this is a 170 this one here is a 180 those should be 140 um, God, I forget they're either primaries or I kind of forgot the names of them guys but you shouldn't have to be in here messing around ever Okay, so I'm going to pause the video. No, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave this top off. Because it, it gives me an opportunity to discuss uh, this uh, cam, two-stage cam, real quick. While you can see it. I wonder if I can zoom in. The two-stage cam. <clears throat> All right, I don't have the, uh, the, the top on and the butterflies to show this, but what happens is 
when you give it that first chunk of gas, uh, first gas, uh, it's, it's called winter morning. You hop in, you depress the gas pedal all the way. It squirts a shot of gas in, squirts a shot of, ooh, it's zoomed in, squirts a shot of gas in, and it sets this fast idle. Now, I can't tell you how many turns this is. Some people are going to say, well, how many turns is it? That's for you to find out with how your engine performs, how it, how it does. Um, but if you'll see, hmm. Oh, if you're wondering what I'm doing with this, I found it in the junkyard. So, you can barely see it. Hmm, let me get off. Let's try to shed some light on it. Okay, so, this screw, ooh, that screw is the fast idle adjuster. That's the first stage of that cam right there it's got just a tiny drop off so this is where when you first start it'll be a, like I like to run it about 2,000 rpm then I quickly give it well you know a few sec 15 seconds or so I give it uh, a little little tap not a hard tap just a little tap just tap it in just tap it in give it a little tap and it should drop it down to this cam and that's where it'll idle at about, um, depending on how cold it is, because the choke has a bimetal spring inside that works off of uh, heat. So as soon as uh, you have a 12 volt, oh God, I keep going. All right, you can apply a seven volt to this and it'll work because uh, that's what the stock carb had, but the stock, car stock carb had a lot of help. It also had a heated base plate and it had a way to let hot air come into the carburetor. Um, so I like to run a 12 volt now on this and there's one on the side of the firewall, uh, side of the passenger side fender well. You can tap into a location there with 12 volt. But it heats this up, then it uh, draws the butterflies open. Let me see if I can do this here. Alright, draws the butterflies open. And then when you give it gas later, as it warms up, it just goes to idle. Okay, I cranked it up. Working pretty good. Uh, got the fast idle adjusted. It cranked up about 20. It's pretty warm today, about 63. But uh, it cranked on up. Idled at 2100, I believe. I gave it a slight. All you got to do is just tap it in. Just tap it in. The gas pedal, and then it jumped on down to the secondary cam. This is what you call a curb idle or warm curb idle because it's not really at its lowest idle yet. It's still warming up. But you should be able to take off right now on, uh, on a cold day and it not stall on you. Choke will probably open up a little bit more when I give it a little gas. Yeah, there we go. Now we're down to the, uh, the last idle. Now it'll just continue to warm up. Well, that's what happens here. When you give it some gas, it'll drop down to there. And this cam um, looks a lot like... Let's pull that into the picture. Looks a lot like that. So a lot of, you know, the first stage is like 2,000 RPM. <clears throat> and then when you give it a little gas, it'll drop down to about anywhere in here. But this is also kind of like um, a volume indicator, if you know what I mean. Um, it slopes off. So, I mean, depending on how warm or cold the vehicle is, like right there, it could be um, uh, 1,500 RPM. Get to about right there because it's at an angle. In fact, you can see it. Let's zoom in. Try to hold this with my neck. Let's see here. You can actually see it 
shy away from that um, fast idle setting screw as it creates a gap. It's when it's totally not even on it after it warms up. Hope that makes sense. Hope I'm making sense. But uh, later when it's warmed up, this should come on down to about right there and it'll be warmed up. So let me um, put the top back on, hook all, hook all this back up, and then we'll talk about this choke. All right, you don't want to lose this clip. They're hard to find. You'll want good eyes. Well, I don't have to do that right now. Do that after the video. Uh, some people say, can you plug this or not? Well, I've run it both ways, and what I found is, um, because I don't run a canister or anything like that, it's all gone. If you don't plug this, what will happen is, your bowl, the gas in it, the bowl, the gas in the bowl will evaporate. You'll have a hard time cranking it, especially if you let it sit for a couple days. This... Um, keeps it from evaporating so fast um, so like it can be a hot day you can be driving around you go park uh, if this is open it, it the heat from the intake and all it'll boil that gas out you'll be cranking and cranking and cranking even on a hot summer day so I like to plug it I run it both ways that was the only ill effect is if it's uh, open it evaporates too soon let's so we just got it out of the box. We're not going to mess with the uh, float because it could be right. But if it's not, I've shown you that. Um, generally, they will come ready to go just fine. But let's talk about this is your, your mixture screw. It's the only one you really got to mess with other than choke. Um, the cool thing about these Webers is everything is accessible. You got your... Your primary idle jet right here it's easy to pull out and um, check for trash and I'll show you all about that and then you got your, um, your secondary idle jet over here it's easy to just get to um, that and your mixture screw your uh, choke your choke pull off shouldn't be a big deal but the choke you know everything is easy to work on so when you get one out of the box, uh, this is what the Weber directions say do. Um, this is of course if your truck's timed right and everything's working well. But what you want to do, am I in the shot? Yeah. So go ahead, screw it all the way in. Let's first see where we were. Alright, so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. i got a marker here. I'm going to mark the uh, top of this right there. 
little black line right there. I'm gonna call that the top. Gotta have a place to keep up with stuff. Am I in the shot? So that's this is the top where the black is. Now I'm gonna go in. What you wanna do, you wanna screw it in, but when you get to the bottom, you wanna do this slowly. You don't wanna wrench it down. It is a needle going into a cavity and if you uh, to restrict flow of gas. So if you go too far in too hard, you'll create a uh, crease around that needle and it'll never act right. So you don't want to do that. But this is what you do. And I'm going to keep up with how many turns it is because all I want to do is come back about one and three quarter or two turns. I would start at two turns. So let's see where we're at right now. And it's like this. It's like, you know, top and bottom. So this is how you keep up with your turns. That's a half. That's a hold, so that's one turn in. Half. Whoa, that's it. I'm gonna snug it. So it was like just a little over one and a half. So, yeah. So I'm gonna say half, hold. That's one and a half, two. And that's two turns out. So it should fire up and run right there, and from there, um, what you would do is crank the vehicle with that. You can do this on the truck, of course, you know. Crank your vehicle, you let it get to operating temp. Let it be warm, ready to go. And, it's, and then, that's where you want to do all your adjustments, is when it's warm and ready to go. So what you want to do, if we're at two turns out, Screwing in restricts air uh, fuel flow. So as it's running and it's two turns, what you want to do to get the lean best idle is screw it in just ever slightly, like just do little bitty increments. Like that's this is like that would be a quarter increment. See how it runs. Give it a little gas. Go in one more. If it starts to stall and run rough, come back out. Come back to where you were at two. Do two and a two and a quarter. See how it runs. Two and a half. See how it runs. If it picks up idle, then it's obviously liking it. Go some more. Two and three quarter or three. If it quits idling up, then go back to where it was just about to idle down you're trying to find the sweet spot that's all you're doing and you're doing it not in drastic turns but slow turns give it some gas goose it to let it settle in and see how it runs now what I do in the summer I generally do have it at about one and three quarter turns out Sometimes two, or th I think that's it. So I think right, and in the winter time when you need it to be a little more rich, I think I'm running. I have little indicators on mine, like it's orange paint, and I think I'm at one and a half or one and three quarter in the summer, and it's about right here. And then in the winter, I have to bump it up to making it two full turns or two and just a little more riching it up that's all there is to that really that's all there is when it comes to uh, setting the the uh, choke there's two ways to do it there's waiting for a cold day cold morning and then going out to your truck and adjusting it and checking the uh, the tension but what I found to be even better <clears throat> is that when the vehicle is warm and it doesn't hurt that um, that it's you know you can do this in the winter but when you're when it's warm and you pop the hood and you're going out here to do this stuff it this cools down quick in the winter so you want to get a hold of what I'm about to show you faster 
Um, but on like a 60 degree day, you can try this and you can, you'll have more time. Here's what I like to do. I like to set it while it's warm. And what that means is when you're, what you're going to do, of course, what, what I would do, is, let me see here, get a pencil. What I would do is I would um, just mark where it currently is so you have a reference point. <clears throat> and loosen the choke. Uh, ring choke ring you don't want to get too crazy loose because it can spin on you because it's under tension so um, to choke it more you kind of retarding it and that's going counterclockwise and to lessen the choke you go to the right which pretty much gives it like no choke at all so in the uh, the warm choke method your vehicle will be running let's see here I gotta loosen the screw. It will be warmed up. And all you wanna do, it'll look like this when you take your breather off. All you wanna do is set it, you just wanna tighten it down right where it starts to turn the choke. Like that. Turn it closed. That's the correct amount of tension. So if you do that. See, it's barely moving. Boom. That's it. And tighten it up. Of course, this is on a warm vehicle, okay? This is when the 12 volt has been applied to this, and this is hot. Currently, this is not correct because it's sitting on a bench, and it is 60, well, it's 60, 65 in here. But then on a cold day, it will, it will uh, have the correct amount of tension. That's how you do that. So I'm going to put this back where it was. Because it's not warmed up. That's why I made that mark. And basically that is, that. I mean it's, I don't have a tool to show you exactly how much tension that is if they even make such I think they do make such a thing like for belt deflection and stuff this is nothing though I mean it's very I mean it's something but it's like really easy but it closes that's all you want um, we've covered everything except for the choke pull off which a lot of you will not have trouble with but if you do um, There's an adjustment in there, and this is what happens. We'll, we'll talk about this. We will talk about it. Um, so what happens is your engine is choked. You crank it up. The engine produces vacuum, and there's a vacuum channel in this choke pull-off. What it does is, I know, we got to understand, we're at fast idle. And it's choked it but when you crank it it will open up well how much opening will it do have you ever noticed that it does open some but how much is what right well a standard is seven millimeters on the back side here um, if your vehicle is not opening enough on its own vacuum what you may see is a lot of black smoke coming out the, the rear now that's it could be too rich as well but part of the choke process is to richen it up. So if you see a lot of black smoke or uh, I don't know carbon and stuff spitting out, then it could be um, not getting enough air. Could be the choke pull off is not adjusted properly. Then a uh, case that I had before, if it's too much, then it won't choke properly. My fast idle won't work properly. So. Um, I'll show you where that's adjusted. You have to take your choke cover off, choke and spring and all. This video is going to run long. So, you just want to pull everything off, keep up with it. Okay, that's all there is to that. We'll put it back together. 
Don't worry about that right now. Um, so I guess I'll turn it up on his side. So what happens is, I'm trying to look at my camera and do the same time. So we've uh, pressed the gas, cranked the vehicle, the vehicle produces vacuum. And what happens is, the vacuum that runs along this chamber in the back, it pulls on this diaphragm and pulls this back. And what happens is, let me try to set this down. Can you all see? What happens is, um, that comes back to about right there. Now I'm putting tension on it because there's a spring in here. But it opened up to a precise point. Now it can open on up, but it's not going to. I mean, not under when you first crank it. But if you look off in there, let's try it. There is a enough. Oh, let me hop up. That's the proper amount of space at seven millimeters or so for air to get in and mix properly. Some people use a drill bit. Um, I think it's you know it's the next one up from a quarter, and they'll stick it right in there to where it barely touches the plate. But like I said, a lot of times this is not something you have to mess with. But if you do have to, or you have any of them issues, it's in here. Take these screws loose. Now, mine fell apart real easy because I've been in there before, but if yours doesn't, just tap on it slightly. Don't take a knife and start working on anything because this is a very um, delicate diaphragm. Let's see if I can get my phone to do right. It's a very delicate diaphragm. And uh, let's see if I can zoom in on it. And you don't want to nick it or anything with a pocket knife. But I have had to uh, take a screwdriver and just like tap around the edge to get it to pop a loose, but it will come loose. Let me try to get my phone back right. Okay. And adjust it down. It's kind of weird talking to myself so much um, so the stop where this works like this this comes back no, nothing to hold it so it's wanting to go crazy but that goes back and it rests against the stop here well if this was not if it's too far in you have too much gap too much gap if it's too far out you don't have enough so all you have to do is take your some needle nose and turn it. This one's pretty stiff. The one I was messing with earlier was not. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to prop the phone up. All right. Because I didn't, you know, I'm doing the quick and dirty gorilla style video stuff. Um, so here's the back of that choke pull off. And sure enough, this was, I'm going to screw it in, this was all the way in, allowing the choke pull-off to just have way too much throw. So anyways, you may want to, let's see if I can get this, get you some needle nose, hold on to it, and what I'm basically doing is turning this clockwise, but you would be turning the screw counterclockwise. It is all the way in. Could have happened over time. It's been in there for 10 years, so vibration and all. But I'm going to, uh, you see I've got it pulled out some now. So I'm going to stick it back on, check my 7mm um, deal, and see how that does. It may have glue in there. This one's pretty good, uh, and it's precise. So that's all there is to that. Some, some of you may have that issue, some of you may not. That's not a big issue, but it, I had it.
there's a problem, I'll find it. It'll happen to me. It will happen to me. So that is basically all there is to it. Um, you definitely want a good spring for your return to, to pull. Oh, I know something I forgot to go over. And that was the idle screw. But you want this to pull, pull shut. If you don't have a good spring, these plates will never fully shut, and you'll um, it'll be it'll smell rich. It'll burn too much gas. So you want these to boom slam shut. Time to put these screws in, and that's that. They'll slam shut if you have a proper spring and spring tension. And I like to uh, get a Weber spring from. I had to get it from Pegasus Auto Racing. I think it was. They can be found online. You just have to get get some spring and figure out a way to mount it. Let's throw this back together real quick, and then we'll go over the uh, the idle adjustment, and that'll be it. That'll be all there is to this. Got to line this dude up. All I'm doing is trying to put the spring in that little. I mean, not the spring. I'm putting the spring on that rod. There. Now, we, we took a lot of stuff apart, but we didn't go through uh, cleaning any jets, which, like I said, I mean, if you was to take this thing apart and clean it, whoa, went too far. All there would be to it is gently taking the top off taking those four air correctors and the primary jets out and cleaning them and then there's these primary and secondary idle jets which are easy to clean and while I'm talking about it let's pull one out the one you'll have most trouble with by the way let me just put this back where I had it I feel like I'm getting in a rush now because it's like 50 minute video God that's long I'm gonna break it down into parts okay real quick this is the only one you'll ever have a lot of trouble with and it'll be idle when you pull up at a red light or something and it dies more than likely or any time for that matter you'll have trash in it oh well you know what it looks like oh here we are Looks like I've robbed this one before. I don't know where I put it, but I must have used it on something. So, that's interesting. Let me put it all back in and we'll look on the other one. You can definitely do this while it's on the truck, but it's difficult. Just don't drop anything. Tight. That's it. Let's look on this one. Let's see what we got. These are easy to do. Yeah, it's got one. Okay. So, I don't know if you can tell, but they've got little bitty tiny hole for air. Then there's the other, or fuel or whatever. But this is, uh, actually has a 60 stamped in the side because generally the the uh, primary is a 60 and the secondary is a 55. Can be a 50. But a lot of times you can take this off, take it out. I doubt the camera will pick up that there's a tiny hole in there. And you can blow it out and be back on the road. That, that's if you have trash in the bowl or something. Alright, now the last thing, and it's in no particular order have we done any of this in a good order, the uh, idle adjustment. Well, what they say do on the idle, which is, which is that screw right there, the idle adjustment. As you can see, it is against the uh, throttle 
So let me try to adjust this. Let's get this down. Tell you what. Let me do it like this. Right. Let me try to do it like that. Okay. So when it's on the vehicle, of course everything's in the way here. Choke is on. This will not be in the way when the choke is done and the vehicle's warmed up. That's the only time you really want to set the idle is when the vehicle is warmed up. See right now it's not even touching the um, throttle linkage because because of uh, it's probably on fast idle. Okay, now now we're touching. So what they say is, I'm gonna mark it first. They say not to go any more. Let's just back it all. God, that thing's in the way. This one's being a pain. Probably because I'm using too big of a screwdriver. Hold on one second. Handy, handy dandy. Okay. Of course, this is just never in the way. I don't know what's going on there. But it is. Oh no, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm so fucked here. They do not want it to be any more than one and a half turns in. The reason for that is if it's any more. Like, for instance, right now, let's see here. The plates are supposed to be completely shut, but being how on this one, and this is a knockoff, I'm not seeing it be completely shut. So it would be getting fuel. I mean, there's going to be some fuel, no doubt, but... I believe that's supposed to be completely shut. I think it's because my choke, there we go. That choke is messing with me. So it's supposed to be completely shut. See, like we're, we're pretending that we're warmed up. And, and now I can get to this, like I'm supposed to. Okay, so this is what they say. It's what Redline says, Weber says. I don't know if you can see it that good. Let's do this. All right. It's hard to do all this. Now, when it touches, only when it touches do you start to count. And I believe right now it is. So, they say... This is where you, you'll start to change your idle. Right now, with that, with this nothing done, it's probably very barely running. 400 RPM, maybe 500 if you're lucky. And then when you start to do this, it'll start to bring your idle up. Oops, sorry. Start to do this, it'll bring your idle up. So, we're going to start right here. I'm going to say half. That's one. Right there, I may be at, I'm going to check this too, that's still closed under there. Whoa, here we are, still closed. In the real world, I may be at a like 700 or so. I'm just guessing because I've done this so much. But that was one turn. This is where I believe I had it. See that, oh, there we go, the black mark. Right there, and this was on a running truck before, so... Um, Right about there should be a good idle. When we're here, we're at one and a half, and, the, and Redline Weber says do not go any more than that because what happens is you will start to open this up. And it will cause a rich condition. I mean, it would be dumping fuel in there. So I'm going to turn it a little more. That was a little more than one and a half. 
and I can see it opening. I mean, you can see it's barely, I can see it opening. So they're correct. I mean, you don't want to do any more than that or you'll have fuel just dumping in there. So you want to get this correct. And I think I'm running about one and a half turns or just a little under one and a half turns. Good Lord, this has been an hour long video about the Weber carburetor. Okay. Woo! All right, so that was like an that's an hour long video. I hope it's helped um, some of you guys that are in the the Mazda groups on Facebook. Um, several of them. So, if there's any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Um, I'm trying to just be helpful. I'm trying to share knowledge. Um, if you liked the video, found it useful, just like and subscribe um, to the channel because there's more stuff that I can always post later. I'll always be posting something. So, Peace out, brothers. Thanks for watching.